You guys know, I don't usually push products on this YouTube channel. I kind of don't believe in it, but I do get emails all the time from companies asking me to. And usually their product is something that is trying to solve a problem that doesn't exist. Or it's a company just trying to cash in on the wholesaling thing. And I get it. Everybody's got to make money. But sometimes somebody wants me to look at a product that I actually use, that actually makes sense in the cruising world. And this time, that's what happened. So today, we're going to be talking about power inverters. This is going to be cool. So the company in question is Leap Trend. They sent me a power inverter and they said I could have it if I showed a video of me installing it or using it or at least talking about it. So let's see what they sent me. Now, of course, all of our boats have batteries in them, 12 volt, 24 volt, whatever it is. But for some of our needs, we need 110 volts to plug in the laptop, things like that. And of course, a power inverter becomes a necessary evil, but power inverters run at about a 20% inefficiency. So we lose 20% of our power from our batteries, our hard earned power, every time we invert it to 110. We're losing 20%. So we try not to do it. Um, but of course we have to. It comes with a little thingy. I have that thingy right there for my existing power inverter. Anyway, a remote switch because we'll need it. A wire to run to the remote switch. And here it is. 3000 watts of pure sine wave inverter power. Cool. It's actually uh, not as heavy as it looks. It's, a, it's heavy enough that I think it might be a reasonably good product. So of course, I googled this brand before I agreed to even look at this thing. And there's a bunch of YouTube videos, I'm not the only one they've reached out to, um, of YouTubers sort of tearing this thing apart, opening it up, looking inside, and uh, doing all that stuff. So that's not where we're going to do today. We're going to take a practical look at this and install it on Lady K because my power inversion needs are not quite met by the power inverter I'm using. So let's get started. Let's have a look at this thing. It's a kind of a beast as far as its dimensions go. It's pretty big. And it looks like every other power inverter. So, so let's get started with this thing. It's kind of big. It's 3000 watts. So it's bigger than the one I have now. When I outfitted this boat originally, I had a 2000 watt power inverter and it worked really well. It'll run your power tools and all that. Usually you need at least 1500 watts to do that stuff. And the 2000 watt did that, but it wouldn't run my air conditioner. So we're going to have to check that out at the end of the video. Will this do it? I don't know. So let's tear out the old power inverter and get this thing installed. So longtime viewers will know that I originally outfitted this boat with a 2000 watt pure sign power inverter. And this is not a 2000 watt pure sign power inverter. It's a Xantrax 1000 because when Lady K almost sunk and she was full to about here with water, that old power inverter stopped working, obviously. Someone gave me this one, another sailor, because that's what sailors do. And this one's been working for a couple years now. It's, uh, it's not looking very healthy. The fan doesn't work, so I don't use it for extended periods. But even though it's just 1,000 watts, it will run those 1,500 watt power tools like a grinder or a sander because it's Xantrax and it's probably under budgeted on the sticker. But it's not very big and it doesn't run my air conditioner. So if we're going to install this Leap Trend product, we're going to have to know that it works because I'm going to have to make room for it. It's not going to fit right here, or at least not the way this one does. I like it being out here because it's open to the air. I don't want it in the battery locker generating heat. Out here is much better. So I think it will fit right here, but before we bolt it right here, we better make sure it works. Now you guys might be thinking, if these power inverters only run at about 80% efficiency and we're wasting 20% of our hard to come by electricity, why do we even use them? Why don't we make everything on the boat 12 volt? And you sort of can for most things, but your laptop, your electric kettle, um, your power tools, things like that, they're, they're all 110 volts. So this is kind of a necessary evil.
Okay, guys, I haven't actually grounded it into the grounding system in Lady K, but I have hooked up positive and negative, and I have plugged in my little plug here, which goes to an outlet over in the saloon, so that there's an outlet over there that works. And it turns on, and it's reading 14.7 volts. Um, that sounds high, but it's probably because the solar panels are on right now. It's outputting 12 volts, and it seems to have a reading on what is coming out of it. Um, so I guess we'll see if that works when we start running some stuff. So we're showing 100% battery. Voltage is 14.6 and the power inverter says the same, 14.6, so that's good. And we're just gonna watch amps in and amps out right now. So right now that you can see the MPPT controller is sort of fiddling around. There's a little bit of a draw right now. Um, and then the MPPT is kicking it back on. And now we're at positive two, positive three. All right, let's plug some junk in here and see what happens. All right, guys, let's plug in some real world stuff that we actually use on our boat. So I've got the power inverter down here. I've got my little orange cord plugged into it. It runs to a an outlet in the saloon and I have this extension cord plugged into that outlet. So we'll be able to plug things in and unplug them pretty easily. Now, on a sailboat, they always say that cruising is working on boats in beautiful places, and that's very true, and nothing gets used more than your palm sander. It's a constant tool, always in use. So let's see what the power inverter thinks of that. Okay, I'm watching the battery monitor while this happens, and it pulled 15 amps while it was running. It kicked a little higher than that when it turned on, but 15 while it was running. Let's see about something a little bigger. Hopefully, in your boating experience, you won't need a grinder, but you should bring one because a flap disc on a grinder will cut down West System Epoxy like you wouldn't believe. And nothing else really touches West System Epoxy, so flap disc. Let's see how many amps this pulls. Twenty-seven amps. And the power inverter seems okay with it. The inverter registered on its little screen seven hundred watts on the Leap Trend inverter. So that's a lot. Let's see what else we can throw at this thing. Here's something that you probably don't think of, but in the cruising life, we love our coffee or tea, if that's what you prefer. And we have to heat the water somehow, and it's kind of a pain to go outside to turn on the propane or to even use the propane when you kind of don't have to. Propane is kind of hard to come by in the Caribbean. It's there, but usually it means walking at least a mile with your propane tank. So we tend to like electric kettles, but electric heating something always uses a ton of electricity. So let's give it a shot. And we are pulling 10 amps right now. Oh, it got angry. 1200 watts and it's angry. And it shut off. What was that? Okay, we're gonna try that again. Plugged not into the extension cord through the outlet and all that stuff. I have this plug directly into the power inverter. 10 amps, well, it's not liking it. It's very angry. That's interesting. Let's try something else that we do tend to use on boats. This is gonna be messy. Okay, the power inverter said that was 800 watts. The Xantrex said it was 11 amps, so it can handle that. The shop vac actually says it's 7.8 amps, but it's pulling 11, so maybe it's struggling a little, the filter's dirty, I don't know. And I guess we should also ask ourselves the question, what two things that draw a lot of power would we use at the same time? And for me, sanding fiberglass is terrible. So, I usually pop the filter off the DeWalt sander and I hook it up to the shop back. And that way it sucks some of the uh, some of the fiberglass itchies 
into this and vacuums it up. So what happens if we turn them both on? That was drawing 17 amps on the Victron and just over a thousand watts on the Leap Trends screen. And it was beeping. It was setting off an alarm. Okay guys, that uh, was not a great test. I was expecting better from the 3000 watts. Am I doing something wrong here? It won't run the electric kettle properly. The batteries are full. We have 425 amp hours. The solar is now kicked on and it's charging at 12, 13 amps. It's kind of around 12 or 13. So we definitely have the energy. We definitely have the capacity that we should be able to run the vacuum and the sander at the same time because I used to do that off the other inverter, the 1000 watt Xantrax. But this leap trend, it just won't do it. My big question is, how long will the leap trend run the 8000 BTU air conditioner that I like to use while I'm in Florida? I'm gonna need it. For the record, the kettle says 1500 watts. It just shut off. I'm not sure why. Not the results I was hoping for from this Leap Trend power inverter. Um, maybe I'm doing something wrong. Maybe I got a bad one. I don't know, but it won't run a 1500 watt electric kettle. And that seems weird to me. Well guys, I don't know what to say. I guess I'm gonna send an email to Leap Trend and give them the benefit of the doubt and find out why I'm having trouble running my electric kettle off of their 3000 watt inverter. This actually has a peak as well. It's rated for a peak of 6000 watts. So it's not kickover and the kettle's turning on. It just won't stay on for more than 10 seconds or so when the, the Leap Trend inverter starts throwing all kinds of alarms and stuff. So it rid 1500 watts and it shut off. So something is definitely going on here that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So we'll give them the benefit of the doubt and I'll let you know how that goes. While I have you guys though, don't forget to check out the History C episode, my other YouTube channel. I did an episode on the transatlantic cables and how they use big sailboats to actually run those cables from North America to Europe or from Europe to North America, depending on which uh, attempt it was. They made several attempts before they got the first cable run. So that's pretty cool. You can check it out. I'll leave a link at the top and a link at the bottom. That's it for this week, guys. I'm uh I'm a little bit disappointed to be honest with you. I was hoping that this thing would work and just do wonders for this boat and it's just not the case. Until next week friends, keep the heavy side down, but not too far down.